Hey guys, it's Ted Bogert. Welcome back to the Ted Show. Super duper, is that a word? Excited to have my dear friend Kendra Davies back for our series, Live Your Effing Life. We're going to say the real F word uh, multiple times during this broadcast. So if you are at work, you might want to turn the volume down. Uh, her life coaching. Uh, she's an amazing life coach, positivity coach, uh, and a dear, dear friend of mine. And today we're going to talk about integration. What the F does that mean? We're going to talk about it. But you guys are going to understand when Kendra imparts her wisdom on us. Welcome back, Kendra. How are you today? Hello. Hello. I am good. How are you doing? I am good. I'm not in the dark, maybe. Yeah, um, a little bit. That's all right. <laughs> I am great. I hope you did well after the storm. We're still praying for yeah. all of our Floridian friends, for sure. It's been a crazy week or so. Uh, so every week or every other week, we are going to be talking about uh, how you can live your fucking life, basically. Yeah. All right, I'll, I'll do it. I'll be the first one. Uh, and go. I think that is such a great topic. Kendra is always uh, so wise about so many things. And I think all of us could use a little kick in the kick in the rear uh, because I think a lot of us are just going through the motions and not living our lives. So today we're going to talk about integration. But before we do that and explain what that even means, tell them a little bit about you. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Kendra Davies. And if you're tuning in for the first time, I am a life coach, speaker, author, and I own Stellar Life Coaching here in Orlando, Florida. And I leverage the powerful to help people change their lives. Yes, you do. And you do an amazing job at it. I can't use that word too much, but it really does describe you and the work that you do. Thank I mean you. that. So let's talk Bear. about immigration. First of all, yeah. What the F is integration? I understand it because you explained it to me earlier, but I want the audience to know <laughs> once you say it, that light bulb is going to go uh -huh. on and they're going to understand. So integration is once you have the knowledge, right? You read the book, you listened to the podcast, you took the course, you went on the retreat, you did the thing to get the information, to get the knowledge, to have the experience. Integration is how do you integrate these changes into your life? Yeah. The process of going from, I think, and I understand this thing to, I live this thing. Yes. And what tends to happen in my field, especially around self-help, coaching, therapy, like we tend to focus so much on the thing and we get all of the information. So we intellectually know a ton of stuff, but that doesn't actually cause change. Right. It is a step in the change process, right? Having that knowledge and understanding is so powerful. However, that integration piece is so important to actually living your fucking life, like living it, right? Not just understanding why you're not living it, but then recognizing that and then choosing to integrate practices. If that's self-care, changing your diet, exercise, building these little healthy habits that allow you to feel more empowered and confident in your daily life. Integration is the actual act of doing that work. So I, I joke about this a lot and I, I'm bad at it too. So I'm making fun of myself as well. But I think we all uh, listen to podcasts, read the books. If there's still bookstores, we go to the self-help aisle. Mm -hmm. We go to the leadership aisle. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we think that the more conferences we go to, and the more books we read and the more podcasts we listen to by mm -hmm. osmosis, it all of a sudden is going to be just change our lives. And mm -hmm. maybe it does intrinsically, but I think a lot of people don't, they're addicted to that, but there's mm -hmm. never any of the next step. There's never any uh, implementation or integration, like you said. And I yeah. feel like we all are stuck in that. We hope, mm -hmm. we love what the, we love what the speaker says. We love what the podcast teaches us. We love the books we read. And we mm -hmm. think God, that's such a beautiful idea. And then we have no idea how to make it come to fruition in our lives and what we're trying to accomplish. Yeah. You know, and I think that something imposter syndrome is something that's going like it's it's like if now it's a buzzword, right? Uh, imposter syndrome, feeling like a fraud and wanting to live an authentic life. And I think that when we have a head full of knowledge and no integration, it causes us to feel inauthentic. Because when you know a thing, but you behave opposite to the thing, I 
you know, I know this is bad for me, but yet I do it anyways. We make these, we make and break these little agreements with ourselves all day long, you know, from I'm going to choose the salad, not the cookie. I'm going to go for a walk at lunch. I'm going to read five pages of my book every day. Every time we say these things and we don't follow through with them, we end up losing trust and belief in ourselves. And it causes us to feel like a fraud because we get a negative consequence, right? The doctor says your cholesterol's high, uh, you know, your sleep patterns get jacked up. Like you, you experience some sort of consequence and you say, oh, I knew this, I knew better. And then we, we end up feeling disconnected from ourselves. We end up, even if our lives are actually quite good, right? You've got the job, the relationship, the cars, the house, the things, you have all the things, but we still feel disconnected because we have this cognitive dissonance between what we understand and know to be true and then how we actually show up in the world. It's, it's interesting. So I'm not, I, I'm a big believer in this particular speaker. I won't mention by names, uh, by name. Uh, I have friends that have walked across the fire uh, mm -hmm. thousands of times. It feels like, or at least that's what they post on social media. Uh, never any implementation. And I think they continue to go back hoping that something miraculously passively will happen. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't understand how important the action is. Uh, you know, I want them to turn up the heat on those coals and that fire to really uh, make that impact. And I feel like people do. They go back. They think, oh, I spent money on a on an event like that. For example, uh, I can see it's changed so many lives. OK, I'm here. Why isn't my life changed? We mm -hmm. just expect that to happen without any kind of action on our part. And you're right. Mm -hmm. I've done it, too. I've gone to I've listened to podcasts. I've gone to events. Again, I can implement that. I've got to figure out how to get that into my life. And then when I don't, I feel bad about the fact that I don't. And then mm -hmm. eventually when it comes up again, I go to the event again and hope for the best. It's we're all yeah. like that. So anybody out there listening, I want you to you're know not you're alone. not alone in this. <laughs> no. And this is part of like why coaching is so powerful and so effective is a huge, huge part of my job is around supporting people to navigate and bridge between the thing I know and believe to be true and the way I actually live. Like how do I align these ideas and thoughts and feelings to the way I actually show up in my life, right? I want to feel joyful and empowered and peaceful and I want to not have chaos or drama. We, we say we have the, these ideas and coaching is one of the, the pathways. It's not the only one, right? Like you don't, I'm not saying you need to work with a coach and that's not a sales pitch for me or anyone else. But I do believe that when you go to that event, that event is necessary. When you walk across the fire, I've, I'm a fire walker. Yep. When I did that, that was massive. Like mentally, what you did was huge and it's factual. You had an experience and that was real, but it was also like a self-help vacation. Right. You get what I'm saying? Yes. You got, you walked into an arena and your kids were not there and your partners were not there and your shitty marriage and that shitty boss and all of the stuff that you had, you got to leave it at the door and have an experience where you were fully embodied and fully present and doing this thing for yourself. And that felt really, really good. And then when you leave your self-help vacation and the shitty boss is there and your kids are there and your partner's there and, and life is back, how do you pull that experience back into the present moment? Instead of leaving it in the auditorium, instead of leaving it in Costa Rica, instead of leaving it wherever you had it, how do you bring it in and start to integrate into your daily life? And I'm, I like, I imagine I'm guilty of this. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm always going to share talks about um, how many people do you know that have bought that gratitude journal, for example, and it's sitting unopened, maybe mm -hmm. maybe a pen on top, it looks pretty at your bedside, but none of that is done. And there, that I'm, mm -hmm. I'm utilizing that because I have one and it's sitting yeah. there at my bedside. <laughs> and so, you know, in my mind, I know the power of it because I, mm -hmm. I do practice what I preach verbally a lot or on the show, mm -hmm. but I, I'm not good at the things, I'm not good at integrating all the time, the things that I know I need to. So yeah. every morning when I wake up and I see that, I feel bad. 
Mm. And it's not motivation enough for me because I haven't planned the time. I haven't taken the time. I start thinking about all the million things I need to do and I don't, I'm not mm. structured enough uh, or disciplined enough in certain areas mm. like that to actually integrate what I know I need to do into my life. Mm -hmm. And I think that you bring up something that's really interesting to me because when we, um, when you think about why we don't integrate, right? Uh, specifically for Americans, it's usually around self-discipline. We, we all lack self-discipline compared to other countries and other parts of the world. <laughs> Americans really lack self-discipline for the most part, right? And, uh, and this is actually not the opinion of Kendra. It's actually in some of the research around positive psychology, when we looked at char character strengths, self-discipline on average is there's 24 of them. It ranks between 18 and 24 for most Americans. Yeah, not all, but for most. And part of the reason for that, it's twofold. One, we have decision fatigue. We are in a constant state of having to make decisions and the options that we have is fucking limitless. So to decide what you want to eat for lunch, you know, back in the day, you might have been like, oh, am I gonna take this salad or <laughs> am I just gonna get a burger in the drive-through? And now it's hundreds of options. It can get delivered to you. <laughs> like so it's, true. it's wild. So decision fatigue. And then the second part is self-efficacy. Self-efficacy is our belief in ourselves to be able to do the thing. Will I follow through? You see that gratitude journal and you say, I'm not going to do that. And that's uh, it. You're, you're, you bought it. You're right. You wanted I, it. And that's why I like and to share the stuff I don't do. And yeah. I know I need to. And so that's why these shows are just as therapeutic and coaching for me as they are for all of yeah. you out there. Trust me. Because there's so many things that I, I am good at uh, mm -hmm. and that I know that I do well in, from an integration standpoint. But there are other things that I know would be life changing that I struggle with sometimes. And I think we all do. And I love that you said decision fatigue, decision making fatigue, 100 percent. When I look at Uber Eats, I just don't want to look anymore. I'm like, can somebody just pick it for me? Yes. Uh, because there's so many choices and it's an immediate thing. That's one thing that we've gotten so used to, especially after COVID. Mm -hmm. Everything's immediately delivered. You can have uh, anything you want delivered to your house within hours, mm. uh, depending on what it is. And so it, yeah. we just, we want somebody else to go, okay, I'm going to bring it to you. Just like, I want mm -hmm. somebody to go, Ted, write in your journal, do it. Mm. And I have to, I know that I have to take steps to do that. And it's all about the habit and the habit forming. And there's a whole show we, I know we could do about that, but the integration yeah. is where we all fall short. And then we start to judge ourselves and then we start to feel there bad about go. ourselves. And then we and just then, as soon as you're in that loop, like once you're in that loop, getting out of that loop, it becomes the work. You're no longer talking about the gratitude journal. I can coach you all day long and tell you about the benefits of gratitude, which you already know. That's why you bought the journal. Like I can coach you through all of the information and knowledge, but that's not the battle that you're in now because now you're in the loop where you've created a pattern in your own behavior where you see the journal and then you ignore the journal. Correct. So now you have a new pattern <laughs> of breaking that relationship with yourself. That's saying, I know that this matters. So here's, here's a tip. First of all, a lot of the times we set these arbitrary goals. Like maybe you picked up that gratitude journal arbitrarily because you listened to a podcast or, you know, Oprah's famous for her gratitude list stuff. So like, let's say that, that you got inspiration from, from, from that. And let's say you were having a particularly sensitive day and you were like, I love my life. And you know, and I want to count my blessings every day. Oh, that's so sweet. Right. But in reality, in reality, in the actual practice of your life, that gratitude journal, writing them down in a journal in the morning, that's not realistic. Like that's not who you are. Maybe you need to do a gratitude challenge with a with like an accountability partner who's going to text you something they're grateful for and you're going to text them something they're grateful for. Maybe somebody in the audience is a photographer and they need to take pictures of beautiful things and share them in, in a portfolio or on Facebook or something like this. Learning to view these things and instead of saying, oh, I'm not going to write in my gratitude journal, so I'm, therefore I'm not going to practice gratitude. Instead of doing that, Say, man, I bought that gratitude journal. I know gratitude is important to me. How could I practice it? 
what is realistic? I can text my wife or my partner or my grown child or whatever and just say, I love you and I really appreciate that you put the dishes away from me last night. Right. Done. The moment that we say, I know it, but I'm not gonna do it is where we break that trust. But you can shift it and that's totally allowed. Do you see what I'm saying? So yes, instead I of do. saying, throw, throw out the baby with the bathwater, shift it. Maybe you're not going to go to the gym. Maybe that's not realistic. The world is telling you that's what you should do. And if you did do it, then, then maybe you would get the ult ultimate results. You're, maybe that's not for you. Maybe uh, you can stop walking by that weight <laughs> in your house and just pick it up and carry it with you to the bathroom and then carry it back to the weight stand. That's what I'm saying is allow yourself to have baby steps and let it be enough. This idea that you have to have a full on gratitude practice when you've not had a gratitude practice may, may not be realistic for you. <laughs> well, I feel like that's true. We set, we look, social media is a blessing and a curse. We look and see what everybody's doing and preaching and we, we think that they're so good at it. And then we want to do that too, because we envision mm -hmm. that that's the reason they're successful. We envision that's the reason that they're doing so many great posts. And what we don't realize is that, like you said, I, that's that's a big light bulb for me. I'm a big gratitude person. Maybe that's not my methodology. Maybe there that's not. Yeah. So that's not what works for me. I'm express gratitude all the time. Yeah. And instead of giving that the credence and the kudos that it should get, I'm focused on the gratitude journal. <laughs> there you go. And how you're not doing it. But I know that you do do it. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? But it I causes see. this dissonance where you say, oh, I'm not doing it. But you are. And learning to align who you are with the thing that it is that you want. If you don't eat vegetables, <laughs> Right? Like, like if, if you've not lived a healthy life and you are 25, 35, 45 years old and you wake up one morning, you're like, I'm going to be healthy and I'm going to do this. It's going to be fucking hard and you're probably not going to do it great or well immediately. Right. Learning to integrate means that I can look at myself and who I am exactly as I am and say, I'm not a morning person. I won't be able to have a morning practice like I see, you know, these other people on social media. I'm not going to be able to do that. But what I can do is I can meditate at night before I go to bed. Yes. I can find that five minutes before I go to sleep, but I'm probably not going to wake up and work out and meditate and write in my journal and do my gratitude. And like, I'm, I'm not going to be that person because I'm not a morning person and I don't operate that way. And that is okay. As long as you don't drop it and then use it as a reason to be disappointed in yourself and as a reason to beat yourself up and you say, what would work? Lunchtime. Lunchtime is going to be where it works, right? I'm going to go in my car at my lunch break and I'm going to meditate and uh, do notes in my phone for a journal. Yeah. Integration right there. Integration. Right? It's, I think that we, we just, we all are guilty of that. I, I, oh, yeah. I was thinking Nobody, about nobody's free of it. I, I bought, um, I bought an extra, you know, again, conf true confessions here. I bought an extra, pair of air, what are they called? Air pod, what are the things in your ear? Earbuds, AirPods. AirPods, there we go. For my bedside, because at night I was going to listen to guided meditation on this amazing app that I pay probably a stupid amount of money for every month. Um, have I taken those uh, AirPods out of the little container to do that? Nope, not in a month and mm -hmm. a half since I've had them. So mm -hmm. I need to, so this is eye opening for me. I need to evaluate the time, the process, why I'm trying to cater myself or corner myself into a particular thing just because uh, that's what I read people do when they're successful. Mm -hmm. I need to mm -hmm. cater it to me because I want it to be successful. I want the practice, yeah. the integration, the implementation to be successful. And I know it can be just because Oprah does it in the morning doesn't mean Ted Bogart is going to do it in the morning or just because no. so-and-so does it at night doesn't mean Ted Bogart can do it at night. And that could be a different way. So that's eye opening for me. And I think for a lot of people, because we do want to integrate it. We just need to figure out how to do it within ourselves. What, what, how do we do it? Just because Kendra does it one way. Yeah. doesn't matter what Ted does it that way. Mm -mm. What matters is that we don't just drop it altogether. Cause the break in the trust 
happens when you look at it and you say, I'm not doing it today. That break, when you say, I'm going to buy this journal and I'm going to have this practice and I want to feel this joy. That is that moment that like self-care, self-care vacation moment where you're like, I'm going to do this thing and I'm going to buy the journal and I'm going to do the things. I'm going to buy the meditation pillow. You know, uh, the headband with the headphones is actually something I would really recommend for people if they want to meditate at night. That's very comfortable, way more comfortable than earbuds. But uh, let's say you do all of that. When you find yourself in the moment where you want to bail, holding yourself accountable to say, I'm not going to not do it. I'm not going to do it for 15 minutes. I'm going to do it for five. If I can do it for three minutes, if I go from zero to three, that is a 300% increase. I think I don't, I don't math, but that's, that's <laughs> more than zero, right? Like, and allow that to be enough because what you have to recognize is that not there's a bunch of science around building positive habits. But to me, the most important part is recognizing that it will always be what you've always gotten. You will always get what you've always gotten if you don't do anything different. This feeling of disappointment of, I know I should, but I'm not going to, that will become the bed that you lay in and you will live there. This will be exactly the same six months from now, a year from now, five days from now, it will be the same. The thing that you don't know is what's on the other side of if you made yourself do it. If you said, I'm not gonna write in this journal, but I am gonna text my friend. And I'm gonna text that friend every single time I think about gratitude, I'm gonna text it. I will take an action that brings it into reality. Does that make sense? Uh, when I started meditating, I did the minute meditation. That's it. When I started doing breath work, I did five minutes of breath work. Now my breath work practice is like an hour, but I start and I allow myself wow. to start right where I am. But I also don't do my breath work practice every single day. Do you see what I mean? It's like allowing yes. ourselves to integrate in a way that is realistic, that will match who we are in this moment. Cause you are ever changing and ever evolving in 30 days from now. If you manage to get three minutes of meditation in every day for 30 days at 31 days, you can up that to seven minutes. That's right. It's and then, those it, then you're not battling that initial battle, but you have to get through that initial struggle. <laughs> Well, if you are as enlightened as I am today and you ha want to have Kendra Davies in your life, coaching wise anyway, um, Kendra, <laughs> what is the best way for them to find out more about you and Stellar Life Coaching? Yes. So everybody can go to stellarlifecoaching.com. You can find all of my contact information. You can follow me on Instagram at, at Stellar Coach. Uh, yeah. And feel free to DM me and send me your questions. The, anything that I can do to support and serve, I am here for. Send me your questions, your thoughts, your ahas, your takeaways. I'd love to hear from you. Amazing as always. So if you guys have a topic you want to hear as well, reach out to me or reach out to Kendra. We'll be doing this about every other week. Uh, we want you guys to go out and live your fucking life, as we say, honestly. And Kendra, that was so eye-opening, as it always is. Thank you so much for the love and light you give to the world and to me. I appreciate you. Always. Thanks, everybody. Right. Be well. Love we'll you, Teddy Bear. We'll see you guys soon. Love you too, honey. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.